Hi, everyone. I hope you're all enjoying FFConf so far. Um, yeah, I want to thank Remy and Julie for inviting me here today. It's, uh, it's an absolute honor to be part of such a well-organized and fun, fun event. So yeah, a little about me. My name is Elena, and I'm a JavaScript developer. I'm currently working at Marvel App, which is a collaborative design platform. And uh, as Remy mentioned, I'm the co-creator of the site AIJS.rocks, which is a collection of AI-powered JavaScript apps and demos. And I also run uh, AI JavaScript London, which is a meetup for JavaScript developers on all things AI and machine learning. So I'm actually mostly a front-end developer. I use React day to day, but recently, I've been delving into the realms of data science, AI, and machine learning. So why would a JavaScript developer care about machine learning? And when I go to meetup events and other events with, with AI and machine learning, people will say to me, but machine learning is for Python developers, or R, maybe Java or Scala. They say, JavaScript is for building web apps. You guys build forms, you make API requests, you shouldn't be concerning yourselves with big data sets and hardcore algorithms. And okay, perhaps JavaScript isn't the first language that springs to mind when you say machine learning, for reasons that I'll go into shortly. But this does seem to be changing, not least because of the announcement of TensorFlow.js, which was announced uh, earlier this year. So for the first time, a major machine learning library, i.e. TensorFlow, has offered a fully supported, entirely JavaScript-based version. So this is big news for JavaScript developers, as TensorFlow.js works in the browser. And do you know which language works in the browser? You guessed it, JavaScript. So before I talk more about JavaScript and machine learning, I'm gonna give a brief high-level introduction into some areas of machine learning. As someone from a web development background myself who's been learning about data science, AI, and machine learning, um, I wanted to clarify some of the concepts and definitions which I personally found a little confusing along the way. So let's talk about the differences between data science, AI, and machine learning. So data science generally uh, is, is the solving, solving complex problems using data. So this could cover things such as analytics, mining, visualization, statistics, and more. Artificial intelligence is the simulation of a human brain function by machines. So this would cover perception, so vision, touch, hearing, actions and movements, so robotics and the ability to move and manipulate objects. Natural language processing, so speech and text, planning, playing chess and predicting moves, and reasoning and knowledge, for example, IBM Watson playing the quiz show Jeopardy. Machine learning uh, involves looking at data and finding insights without specifically being told what to, what to look for. So this is different to traditional computer algorithms because it specifically involves learning. So it's generally accepted that a subfield of both data science and AI is machine learning. Machine learning itself has three main subfields, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. And whilst there are many machine learning algorithms which solve specific problems, the main thing which you should focus on when you're starting your journey into machine learning is artificial neural networks. Now, I have no doubt that many of you have already heard of artificial neural networks. Perhaps you think they sound interesting, you'd like to know more, or maybe you've already even been reading or learning about them already. I can tell you that artificial neural networks are the most exciting thing within the field of uh, machine learning right now. They're incredibly general, uh, sorry, they're incredibly powerful, and they're even moving into other AI subdomains, such as natural language processing and robotics, where previously applied algorithms are being replaced with neural networks to great success. 
So they've actually been theorised since the 1950s, but it's only recently that we've had enough processing power to actually get them to work. So artificial neural networks are inspired by biological neural networks. So they're based on the human brain and how we think. So this is what a real biological neuron looks like. The dendrites are the inputs, the axons are the outputs. When enough, uh, when enough dendrites fire, the axons fire outwards. So your brain has around 100 billion of these neurons all connected together in a neural network. So an artificial neuron works much the same. It's essentially an algorithm which receives a set of values, and if those values are high enough, then it will activate. So in this case, we have two inputs, 0.3 and 0.7, and then the next step is to assign those inputs weights, which represents how important they are. Usually, uh, use, especially using a library such as TensorFlow, you would initialize all of these weights randomly, and then they would be automatically adjusted to reflect the importance of the inputs based on the findings of the neural network. So you'd also add a bias to inputs with zero, and then we have something called the activation function, uh, which is gonna make the neuron fire or activate if the incoming inputs and weights reach a certain threshold. So the inputs get multiplied by the weights and then added together and passed into the activation function. So for now, our activation function is going to be really simple. If the sum of the inputs times the weights is positive, the neuron will activate, and if it's negative, it will not. So in this case, the neuron receives a positive value of 2.7, and so it will activate. The activation returns a one, not a zero. So this activation function is called a threshold function, and it looks like this. The problem with this activation function is that you only need to be a tiny amount either side of this point in the middle to yield completely different results. So there's many types of, act there's many activation functions, and other common ones are sigmoid and relu, both of which allow smaller, taken, smaller changes to be taken into account when deciding whether a neuron uh, activates or not. So if you connect many neurons together in rows and layers, you make a neural network. Here we have four layers. The purple layer is our input layer, which represents the real data. So if we were predicting house prices, this might represent the number of rooms, the age of the house, uh, the square footage, and so on. The red layer on the right is your output layer. In this case, we only have one output, which is the price of the house. So we also have two hidden layers, the blue and the green layers, uh, which receive inputs and pass outputs. These two hidden layers are dense layers, which means they're fully connected. So again, we would assign weights to each input. The data flows from the input layer, hits the neuron in the next layer, and then if activated based on the weights, it will send the, send it, the outputs forward to the connected neurons in the next layer. When training a neural network, and you need to train a neural network for it to be useful, in most cases, you would already know the expected result, which is known as supervised learning. You can then use something called a loss function to calculate how far off the model's output is from the correct output. In this case, the model predicted three, but we were expecting eight then we would use something called an optimizer algorithm, which is the thing doing the actual training. Its job is to go back and update the weights and biases in order to get the outputs closer to the expected results. So you would repeat this a bunch of times with many sets of inputs and expected outputs, and eventually, you get a trained model which can receive inputs and give accurate outputs. So why all the hype with neural networks? 
Well, they're actually quite general. You can learn the basis and then apply the same techniques and tools to a range of different, uh, other different problems with only a little tweaking and not much domain-specific knowledge required. Neural networks work best with labeled data, and more and more labeled data is becoming available every day. This means that developers, researchers, and businesses can make use of the ever-increasing computing power and available data and use neural networks to find patterns which they never would have been able to by just searching and analyzing the data themselves. So how do we actually carry out machine learning? I previously demonstrated how an artificial neural network works, but what about the technology we as developers can use to implement this? More specifically, what can we as JavaScript developers use to imp implement this? Well, until recently, not so much. Compared to Python, the go-to language for scientific computing and machine learning, JavaScript is barely a fraction of the tools and resources available. Setting up models involves configuring how you pass a set of, uh, of inputs through a set of functions and algorithms. So if that's all there is to it, then why hasn't JavaScript been a contender with other languages when it comes to machine learning? JavaScript has matured a lot over the last five years, and it has a huge community around it. It's also everywhere. It's in the browser, in the cloud. It's building front ends, back ends, games, mobile apps, desktop apps. It was crowned the most popular language of 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, and 2014 as per the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. However, despite JavaScript's popularity, the widespread adoption and the continuous stream of new tools, packages, and frameworks, there's been this great big closed off domain to JavaScript developers, that of AI and machine learning. <laughs> so why have these things been so out of reach for JavaScript developers? JavaScript is a general purpose language. You can, and people do, build anything and everything out of it. Python was also designed to be a high-level, general-purpose language. But the main reason that Python has been crowned king of machine learning is because of the awesome community around it. Python was designed right from the start to be syntactically elegant and easy to learn. So academics and researchers picked it up. Uh, it was easy to test ideas and focus, allowed them to focus on research and findings. JavaScript has only really recently become syntactically elegant with things such as generators and async await being added. There have, of course, been some interesting open source JavaScript projects for scientific computing and machine learning. Brain.js, Synaptic.js, PropellerML, for example. But generally speaking, JavaScript just doesn't compare when it comes to the number of tools and packages for machine learning. But it doesn't have to be that way especially now we have TensorFlow.js. So TensorFlow.js was announced on the 30th of March, so it's still fairly new, but it's arguably the most exciting thing to happen with JavaScript and machine learning so far. Before I talk more about TensorFlow.js, let's look at what TensorFlow is. So TensorFlow is a, it's an incredibly powerful machine learning and deep learning library. It allows data flow programming across a range of tasks, and as well as being a symbolic maths library, it's also used for machine learning applications, such as neural networks. <coughs> TensorFlow was developed by Google Brain for internal use, and it was open sourced in November 2015. Since then, it has, become, it has quickly become one of the most popular machine learning frameworks on the scene. TensorFlow's GitHub repo has more than three times the numbers of stars to, compared to Scikit-learn, which is the next most starred machine learning project. So TensorFlow allows developers to create large-scale neural networks with many layers and can process and create models for things such as voice and sound recognition, language detection, and a whole lot more. 
NASA used TensorFlow to find new planets orbiting stars. And more recently, students have been using TensorFlow to map craters to try to figure out where matter has existed in various places and across uh, different times to try and understand the very origins of our solar, solar system. It's even being used to prevent illegal deforestation in the Amazon. Solar-powered, upcycled phones are hidden high up in the trees, and they're trained using TensorFlow to detect the sounds of chainsaws and logging tra trucks and alert the rangers who police the forest. And now we have TensorFlow.js. So this is TensorFlow completely rewritten in JavaScript. And despite the shared methods and almost identical API, you don't need TensorFlow or anything else installed to use TensorFlow.js. So let's look at how TensorFlow.js came about. Well, firstly, because of the popularity of the TensorFlow pet playground. So this is an in-browser interactive visualization of a neural network. And you can see how adding layers and neurons work and how changing these yield different results. For example, here we're trying to predict how to separate the yellow and the blue dots. And at first it doesn't do great, but then if you add more neurons and layers, then the model will have no problem in finding that separation. So the code used to make this website is all open source. There's a repo on the TensorFlow GitHub page. And this was turned into a library called DeepLearn.js, which has now become TensorFlow.js. So TensorFlow.js is just the next iteration of that work. DeepLearn.js was only released in August 2017. And in the short time before joining the TensorFlow family, they released a bunch of demos such as style transfer, where you can apply the style of a famous artist's work to any photo. So this here, it's applying the style of Francis Picabia to a photograph of Scarlett Johansson. DeepLearn.js also created Teachable Machine, where you can train a neural network to use your computer's camera with things such as a hand or a head movement to trigger the loading of set sounds or images. So you capture frames while holding down one of the colored train buttons um, while doing the action. And then after the training, the neural network will trigger one of the outputs on the right when you repeat this action. So this, this demo is really cool, actually. And it's on the TensorFlow.js website if you want to have a play. So TensorFlow.js is able to train models in the browser. And it uses WebGL, which is an API used by browsers to access your graphics card or your GPU. Running in the browser means no setting up drivers or installs. And it works across all devices. TensorFlow.js also works server-side. They recently uh, released Node.js bindings. This means that the same JavaScript code can work on both the browser and the server. So what can you do with TensorFlow.js? Well, three things. You can create and train models in the browser or server side. You can run pre-trained models in the browser in what's called inference mode. And you can retrain an existing model in what that's called transfer learning. So there are many AI and machine learning JavaScript apps and demos popping up now, many of which are featured on AIJS.rocks. So do check it out if you can and have a play around. A lot of them let you interact by drawing, uploading an image, or accessing your camera for image detection, or even for capturing your movements as a controller. And there's also games such as this one. <laughs> so this is my friend Asim, who was very keen to be in this demo because he had just bought this new hat. And uh, he is very proud of this hat. So Asim is the other cr creator of uh, AIGS at Rocks. And here he is capturing, um, he's capturing images using his webcam, ready to play the Pac-Man game. So the app loads a model, 
which has already been trained, but it requires the user to do this additional training um, to, so the model can update itself. Um, so here you can see the model's capturing extra frames for up, down, left, and right. And then it gets trained with these right inside the browser. And then you can play the game using movements as controllers. So another fun demo I want to show you is Move Mirror, made by the smart people at the Google Creative Lab, which lets you explore, um, explore pictures in a fun way. You turn on your webcam and move around, and the camera pulls up pictures of poses that match yours in real time from a database of more than 80,000 images. And of course, here's Asim again, <laughs> trying out it is hat. So this, this game uses a pre-trained model called PoseNet, which detects positions of 17 points on the body, such as eyes, ears, wrists, and knees. It runs entirely within the browser, and it can be used with any webcam. So I also want to show you Sketch RNN, which is a generative recurrent neural network capable of producing sketches of common objects. So as you can see here, I can start a drawing by adding this one line, and then the model will continue my drawing. I've selected a bird here, but there's a number of different subjects to choose from. So this was made by David Ha with the goal of training a machine to draw and generalize abstract concepts in a similar way to humans. So it was trained on a data set of hand-drawn sketches, and it has the potential to help artists um, with their work or to help people learn to draw. So this is a JavaScript implementation of Magenta's sketch RNN model. Magenta is a research project exploring the role of machine learning in the process of creating art and music. Primarily, this involves developing new deep learning and reinforcement learning algorithms for generating songs, images, drawings, and other material. Uh, and there is Magenta.js, which uses TensorFlow.js to run Magenta models. So if you're interested in the creative side of machine learning uh, and JavaScript, then you should definitely check out Magenta. So it's super easy to add TensorFlow.js to your project. You can use NPM or Yarn, or you can link to the CDN uh, in, a, in a script tag right inside your HTML file. And then you have access to the global TF object where you can carry out various methods and operations. For training models, the library consists of two different packages, the core API and the layers API. A tensor is the central unit of data in TensorFlow.js, and it's basically an, a multi-dimensional array of numbers, an n-dimensional array. You can create a tensor by doing tf.tensor and passing it an array of values and a shape of rows or columns, or you can infer the shape with nested arrays. You can then perform maths operations on these, for example, a dot square, and of course, you can use chaining as you can with any other JavaScript function. The flexible, low-level core API is syntactically very similar to the TensorFlow Python library, and it involves storing data using tensors and then applying maths operations on them to represent the work the model does. So this is an example of doing polynomial regression, which is similar to linear regression, but a curve. And here we are predicting what the y value will be, knowing the value of x, so that we can plot it on a graph. So this is not deep learning. Regression is generally referred to as shallow learning. Setting up layers for a neural network with these maths operations is a lot more complicated. So let's take a look at the layers API. So this is a higher level, Keras-inspired layers API, and it makes it a whole lot easier to build and train models. So you can create a neural network with pre-constructed layers, such as in this exa example. 
Here, we create a dense layer, which means it's fully connected, and we pass a config object to it with some data, such as the number of units for the dimensionality of the output space, and the activation function. In this case, we're going to use ReLU, if you remember what that looks like from our neural net net network intro. So the activation function is going to tell each neuron in this layer whether to activate or not based on the inputs and inputs weights. We also need to record how far off of the expected output we are using a loss function. Mean squared error is a common and straightforward loss function, so we'll use that. And then we need to use an optimizer, which is going to go back and adjust the weights. So hopefully when the model iterates over and over again, it will get a lower loss rate and the outputs will be closer to the expected ones. So you would call model.compile with your loss function and your optimizer, and model.fit with your data, x is your data, y is the corresponding labels. Because TensorFlow.js uses the GPU to accelerate maths operations, you do have to think a bit about memory management uh, when you're cre creating lots of ten tensors. You'll need to clean them up after your function has run. This sounds scary to JavaScript developers, but don't worry, it's not at all like the hardcore memory management that C developers have to undergo. Simply wrap your functions with a tf.tidy. Or you can use dispose, which is, a sim which is similar, but it's called directly on the tensors or variables. And then your browser won't crash because of a memory leak. So I've talked about how to train a model with TensorFlow.js. So let's see how to load a pre-trained model uh, straight into the browser. With a pre-trained model, we simply call tf.loadModel and pass a URL. So this is a URL to a pre-trained model called MobileNet. And Mo MobileNet is an open source convolutional neural network architecture relating to image recognition. There are many types of neural network, but whenever you hear convolutional neural network, think image recognition. MobileNet was trained uh, using a large subset of a huge image database called ImageNet, and it's optimized to perform image detection on mobile devices and embedded applications. So there's more info about MobileNet on the TensorFlow GitHub page under examples, and it's a really interesting one to have a play with around. You don't need much, well, you don't need any machine, prior machine learning knowledge. You simply load the model, and then you pass it an image, video, or canvas element, and then it will return an array of the most likely predictions and the percentage of confidence. So as well as training a model and loading a pre-trained model, the third thing you can do with TensorFlow is transfer learning. So this is where you train the tail end of an existing model. Using the mobile net example once again, you would load the model and set it to a variable and then call get layer on it and pass the name of the layer. Once you have this layer, you can create your own model just like we did in the previous example and train it with your own data. The Pac-Man demo was using MobileNet and retraining it with the user's extra images captured during the, the training, for example. So there you have it. Three ways you can use TensorFlow.js. Training a model, loading a pre-trained model, and retraining an existing model. If you're wondering about performance, this is a benchmark for running a mobile net model in inference mode, comparing the JavaScript and Python versions of TensorFlow. If you remember, inference mode means running a model which has already been trained. So the standard Python TensorFlow, when used with a powerful CUDA graphics card, gets less than three milliseconds, and just using the CPU or something like a MacBook Pro would take around 60 milliseconds. Compared to TensorFlow.js, running uh, with the fancy graphics card results in just under 11 milliseconds. 
and for running on the integrated graphics card of a laptop, it's around 100 milliseconds. But these are milliseconds, so it's important to realize that 100 milliseconds is not actually bad at all. It's only going to improve as both the technology and the web improve, and you can already really build some amazing applications with this. A whole world of potential applications of JavaScript and machine learning has opened up with the recent announcement of TensorFlow.js. Whilst much of machine learning is maths, stats, probability, functions, and algorithms, machine learning is not done in isolation. It is often applied in some kind of application context, such as speech or text processing or computer vision, with this data being used as the input to machine learning models. JavaScript is the de facto language to build apps and interfaces which can consume user interaction data. So mouse events, text and voice inputs, video inputs via the camera, and then potentially GPS, gyroscope, and more, depending on your device. With TensorFlow.js, data generated from these user events can be processed and sent to a model server side, or it can just stay within the browser. So as JavaScript developers, we are not necessarily trying to play catch up with Python when it comes to AI and machine learning. At least when it comes to building machine learning applications, we have our own place as masters of the browser and user interaction data. If you want to become really good at machine learning, then yes, you still do have to learn the maths, linear algebra, formulas, and so on. But if you just want to see what all the fuss is about, have a play, maybe build something cool really quickly, you can just load an existing model and come up with new and creative ways to send data to it via an interface or app. And then if you want to go a bit deeper, you could try retraining an existing model with new data. As it's so easy to use in the browser, you can just open a new code pen or JS bin, add the CDN, and import the package and start playing with it right away. So I hope this has encouraged you to pursue trying to build or at least try out a couple of projects using machine learning and JavaScript. I highly recommend going to the official website, uh, js.tensorflow.org, and working your way through the tutorials on there, as well as going to the TensorFlow GitHub, especially the TFJS examples repo, as there are many examples for you to try out, um, including MobileNet. There are, of course, a bunch of interactive demos you can have a play with on AIJS.rocks. And I also want to mention ML5.js, which is a wrapper around TensorFlow.js, which makes it even easier to load and access pre-trained models in your browser. And if you're looking for video tutorials, do check out Daniel Schiffman from The Coding Train. He's got some excellent series on YouTube where he trains a model using TensorFlow.js, as well as some on training a neural network using vanilla JavaScript. The future of machine learning and JavaScript. Well, it's certainly bright. The examples I've shown are mostly fun or creative rather than solving real world or enterprise problems. But I think we'll see more examples of solving these problems over the coming months. There's a lot of potential to build accessible apps using head movements or voice as controllers, for example, and also potential to build privacy-friendly apps. Running models in the browser means that your user data doesn't have to be sent server-side anywhere. There's no doubt that as more and more JavaScript get there's no doubt that as more and more JavaScript developers get involved in machine learning, then further tools will evolve as the community grows. And I'm hoping that, that this community will include you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>